Hello everyone, it's your bud. Today's video is unscripted. I'm not feeling so good, so this is just gonna be a quick one, then I'm gonna go lie down. But in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you about two of the most evil powers or quirks or superpowers or mutations or whatever you wanna think of this as. Whether you want this to be in DC or Marvel or in My Hero Academia, whatever you want, or Dungeons and Dragons even. Whatever story you can think to put these powers in is up to you. However, these are the two most evil powers that I have ever thought of. Number one is going to rely on a power of transforming a person into a weapon. Now there are many shows that do this, but the one that I'm going to hone in on as an example is Soul Eater. So imagine if a person had a quirk or ability to transform a being into a weapon. Now that would be against the being's will, sort of just like an enslavement thing. Imagine if they could transform you into a weapon, and then if they could like with a snap of a finger make you not a weapon again. Now I'm not 100% sure if they would have the ability to change the person back from a weapon or even if they would want that ability. Perhaps they have that ability but they just choose not to use it and they just choose to keep whatever person they turn into a weapon in that form. And perhaps the only way to have a person who has been changed into a weapon change back is to have the original like curse be lifted possibly by killing the person who did it. So if someone who has been turned into a weapon by this evil evil person might only be changed back when that evil person dies or maybe it's a will thing that you just have to defeat the person and make them free them and once they've been freed they can't be changed into a weapon again unless it's a physical touch. I always imagine this would have to be by physical touch so if the person can touch you they can change you into a weapon. Now the second most evil person, this is not in order of like who's the most evil or who's not. These two together are the most evil pair of superpowers or quirks that I can imagine. Again, I believe they would have to touch the person to make this work, but their ability would be to make a child or a clone of whoever they touched. Now imagine if someone was fighting, say, All Might or Superman or something like that, and they just touched the person, and all of a sudden a glowing energy appeared, and that energy solidified into a small baby, and that baby was the child of whoever they were fighting. So it could have been All Might or Superman or whoever you want to think of, Bat Man. Imagine if someone went up to Batman and used this ability and all of a sudden that evil person was then holding in their hands a child of Batman. So the evil part here is in that they're doing damage to the person they're fighting. The evil part is that they've changed the priorities of the one they were fighting. So imagine if this person with a quirk was fighting All Might. They touched All Might, then backed away and All Might was like, what? You just touched me and backed away? What was that? And then all of a sudden in that person's hand, a small baby appears. And that baby is then passed over to the other person who then instantly turns it into a weapon. All Might would then immediately have to drop all of whatever missions or whatever priorities he had because this is an innocent life that has now been enslaved into the form of a weapon and potentially these weapons could have something to do with the quirk or ability of the person they were created from. So imagine if Endeavor was touched by this person. Maybe that child would have a sort of copy. So a quick summary, both of these abilities require physical contact with the person. One of them is able to change whatever person they come into contact with into a weapon and the other one is able to make a child of whatever person they have come into contact with and yeah so that's like a super super powerful evil combination like I said I thought of this originally in like maybe some D&D or like a superhero world kind of like my hero setting so imagine if these two could just go around and then I mean, they could basically blackmail whoever they wanted, like, because they could just walk up. One person could create an innocent life just through a handshake or a simple high five or just the smallest gesture. Then they could back away, create an innocent life, hand it over to their partner who instantly changes it into a weapon. And depending on the person this child came from, they could perhaps have a copy or clone of the abilities of that person. So making a child from Endeavor would perhaps produce a different weapon than a child from All Might, although that is just speculation. Perhaps the weapon the child turns into has a variety no matter what. Now, I'm not 100% sure if the person that can create a child could do that multiple times for each person, or perhaps they could do that only once. Perhaps they could only have one of these childs in existence 
for each person. So then they couldn't like make, you know, like 12 different All Might kids, hand them all over to their person who could make 12 different All Might weapons. Although I'm not 100% sure. This is all up to you. What do you think would be better? Do you think it'd be better if they could just like every single time they punch someone in the face, they could walk away, create a new life, hand it over, have that change into a different weapon, walk over, hit them again, and then just again, like every single time physical contact is made, that person could back away and create a life. Do you think that should happen? Or do you think it should only be allowed to happen once per individual this person has come into contact with? So there's the person who's able to create life through just one single physical contact. They can back away and create a, again, I'm not 100% sure if this would be a clone or if this would technically be a child. I don't really like the idea of calling this a child because a child in my mind requires two parents. And that would mean that the evil person would be one of the parents and the target would be the other parent, but I don't believe that. I think it would only be a child of the target or the victim, I guess you could say. So if the victim was All Might and all of a sudden a child was created from him, it would be a child of only All Might, which I guess would kind of make it a clone only. So yeah, it's not a child because it doesn't have the genetic information of two people. It does not have the genetic information of the evil person. Although feel free to make whatever changes you like to make this fit for whatever you want because I think things would get a hundred times worse if the evil person's DNA was mixed with whoever their target was. Like, because that would create a whole thing of like, like imagine an anti-hero. If an anti-hero, like let's say Guts, if someone walked up to Guts and did that power and they were like, look, here's a child, are you going to save it? I'm going to hand it over to someone, they'll turn it into a weapon and it'll be enslaved forever. Like, someone as an anti-hero, would they be like, oh, well, I have more pressing goals and just walk away? Would they feel like it was something that they had claimed to if it was kind of mixed with the evil person who created it? I feel like some of the evil people or more anti-hero people would not save the child if they knew the child was part them and part the evil person that created it. So yeah, that's the evil pair. One person who can create life through one simple physical contact and perhaps doing this many times or perhaps once only per individual. And then another person who can transform anyone they touch into a weapon, very much Soul Eater style. Now I know there's tons of other examples in anime of weapons turning into people or people turning into weapons. I can think of lots, but I'm just gonna say Soul Eater for simplicity. Yeah, so this was just a quick video. I'm feeling pretty bad, but I just wanted to leave you with something to daydream about before I go lie down, and I'm gonna go do the same and go find something else to daydream and think about for tomorrow's video. So if you like this idea, leave this a like, and I can share more of my original ideas. There are tons some of them are good, some of them are bad. And anyways, uh, excuse the art here. As I said, I'm not feeling too good, so I'm sure the art here is going to be pretty minimal, but at least you will get the understanding of what I'm talking about. So leave this a like if you want more of my hero or quirk or superpower ideas. Subscribe for daily videos. I make a new video every single day on this channel to make sure that you have something to watch and be entertained by during all of this. And leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching.